What's up everyone? Welcome to another edition of The Xander Effect. This is a brand new season with some brand new episodes. And I'm here at the Hollywood Museum to commemorate this brand new season of The Xander Effect. Coming up right now. What's up everyone? This is the Xander Effect. Brand new and improved as you can see. I'm your host Xander Dames and here are some news in case you haven't heard it. Creator of Sons of Anarchy and uh, the creator of the Mayans MC Kurt Sutter was fired by Disney uh, amid some complaints from both uh, cast and uh, staff members of the show uh, The Mayans. Um, they're basically saying that um, as of this time, you know, basically Kurt's out of uh, of the show, of having any influence with the show whatsoever, I believe it was. But Kurt Sutter has a different take on it. According to what he uh, what he said, he says, the truth is the suits wanted me gone. I stepped on toes and bruised egos. And in the Disney regime in danger i'm dangerous to the wholesome brand and clearly not worth the trouble now it's funny that kurt actually says this because uh, to be honest with you i saw uh not too long ago i saw uh, uh kind of like a like a documentary i guess you might say uh when he was starting to go scouting for locations for uh the new mayans mc tv show that's on fx and it just seemed to me, and this is all actually on the FX network. Um, they're kind of they were kind of doing like a behind the scenes type of thing uh, before uh, the Mayans MC began, and it just seemed to me that I guess they the, uh, network executives really didn't want Kurt Sutter to direct it uh, for for anything really, and um, I guess they were they were really button heads from the very start of the show. Uh, they didn't want him directing it. They didn't want him to be in it. They didn't. Well, obviously, his character was killed off. Spoiler alert: was killed off. In, uh, killed off in Sons of Anarchy. Um, but they just didn't want him to direct it or cast it or anything. So he. It seemed like he was a little bit bent out of shape. Um, for you know because they did that to him. So problems might have already stemmed since then i mean he said on 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 camera he basically said that he was okay with them hiring on a new director to take this show in the in a in a in a in a direction that fx is more pleased with but uh i guess things got a little worse and, uh, you know, now with this merger, Fox merging with Disney, Disney has a lot more say into what's going on in its programming. And I guess Kurt Sutter wasn't a part of that uh, that plan. And he was removed from the Mayans. So it'll be interesting to see exactly where the Mayans uh, TV show goes from here, because, I mean, the creator's gone. So that kind of, you know that kind of leaves a little bit of a question mark up in the air as to where exactly this show is going to go. If it's going to go in the vision that Kurt Sutter had in that direction, or who knows, who knows now that Disney's in charge of a lot of stuff going on in FX, who knows what's going to happen with that in other celebrity news, Felicity Huffman, uh, got sentenced to 14 days in federal penitentiary thanks to the whole college scandal that her, Lori Laughlin, Lori Laughlin's husband, and a few and about 50 other people were involved in as far as bribing uh, uh, colleges to accept their their children into their institutions. And uh, Felicity Huffman, she got 14 days at the uh, Federal Correctional Institution in Dublin, California. Now, 
it's it's it just seems it just seems interesting because basically her schedule goes as follows: uh, wake up is at five a.m., breakfast at five thirty to six fifteen a.m., lunch from ten forty five a.m. to noon, and dinner after four p.m. In between, she is allowed to listen to music, participate in arts and crafts, spend time outside anytime from six thirty a.m. to eight thirty p.m. And is allowed to play sports, including basketball, volleyball, track, softball, and tennis. She is also allowed to have visitors on Saturdays and Sundays from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. She is set to be rela- released October 27th, just shy of the four- of her 14-day sentence. <clears throat> now, correct me if I'm wrong, but that sounds awfully like, you know, summer camp. <laughs> I mean, obviously... I, I get it. It's it's federal penitentiary and everything, but and it's minimum maximum of security, obviously, because she's you know at no risk. She's not a she's not a violent offender or anything like that. But I mean, it seems to me that she got off pretty easy uh, compared to many other people that can't really afford great lawyers um, and and other things like. That. At least that's that's what I'm assuming. Um, and that's in my opinion, to be honest with you, because I've known others to get a little bit of harsher punishment than that but i guess you know she must have have good lawyers to get her something you know as little as 14 days uh i've known people that have gone to prison for committing this type of crime for three years your guess is as good as mine you know i mean she definitely went to what most people call club fed because she's it seems that she's going to be pretty much cushy in there for the most part uh, it's almost like a mix between camp, summer camp, and the military. Go figure. Uh, her, the other person that's uh, that's set to be uh, in court on in January of 2020 is Lori Laughlin. Now, Lori, she tried to reach out to Felicity Huffman uh, before she went into prison to, I guess, be you know, offer some moral support uh, because I guess they're in this together. And according to some sources, it seems like Felicity Huffman did not respond to Lori Laughlin. Could it, I mean, maybe there's some animosity. Maybe they, maybe uh, Felicity is is blaming Lori for a lot of what happened, a lot of what's going on. So she didn't want to have anything to do with uh, with Lori or with any of that mess. She probably wants all of this behind her. Uh, uh, Felicity Huffman's husband, uh, William Macy, will be filming, will be actually shooting uh, his TV show uh, while she's in prison. And uh, who knows uh, what what Felicity's uh, future holds in the entertainment industry? I mean, hell, if Martha Stewart could go into prison for, I believe it was like, maybe what, 14 months, something like that, uh, for a federal crime, and she was able to bounce back, I'm sure Felicity Huffman will be, you know, will be all right. In exciting entertainment news, Crisis on Infinite Earths. Man, am I excited for this mega crossover event that the CW has going on with the final season of Arrow, The Flash, DC's Legends of Tomorrow, they're even putting in, well, and Supergirl, and they're now including Black Lightning and the brand new series Batwoman. This is set to be a huge event. Let me tell you just how huge this event is going to be. They are bringing back Tom Welling and Erica Durantz. You may have remembered them from the 90s hit TV show Smallville. Tom Wellings played uh, Clark Kent, Clark Kent, a.k.a. Superman, and Erica Durantz played uh, his love interest, Lois Lane. So this is going to be huge. They're bringing him back uh, to do, uh, to do uh, guest appearances on this show. Now, Erica Durantz has already made a guest appearance on Supergirl. She played, she played uh, Supergirl's mother from Krypton, and uh, she made that appearance, which is really cool to see, actually. Um, but yeah, it's going to be interesting to see them back there, uh, to see how, like, you know, it's been, it's been years, it's been, God, it's been like many years since Smallville went off the air and, um, it's, it'll be interesting to see exactly what the characters have been up to since then. So I'm excited about that. There are also rumors that they're trying to get, um, they're trying to get, uh, 
Lex Luthor to also make an appearance. I'm talking about Lex Luthor from Smallville. Uh, they're trying to get him to uh, make an appearance as well. They're even including uh, Tom Ellis, who plays Lucifer on the Fox his TV show, to also make an appearance as Lucifer, which that would be very interesting to see. I'm sure that that probably has something to do with uh, with Constantine's character on DC's Legends of Tomorrow. Um, so there's a there's a lot of people that are going to be actually in in this in this uh, this uh, crossover event. Also, they're they're bringing back uh, Brandon Ralph's uh, Superman character. You may remember that Brandon Ralph played Superman in the movie Superman Returns, which obviously didn't do too well at the box office. But they're bringing super his character Superman back. But they're bringing him back as the Kingdom Come uh, version of Superman. So in this, if you're not very well familiar with the comic book, the Kingdom Come uh, version of Superman is basically uh, this Superman has lost. Uh, Lois Lane was killed in this Earth. Uh, and, uh, I, I believe this, the Superman is the one that basically has, has, um, has anger issues. He's a little bit uh, angry at society because, you know, they were the reason why super, why Lois Lane was killed. And so therefore he believes that he needs to rule with iron, with an iron fist. That's what the Superman uh, I'm assuming is going to end up being for Brandon Routh. And of course, you know, you have, uh, you have uh, Tyler Hoechlin who plays the current Superman in the Supergirl series that will also be joining in uh, with with this all star cast. And we also have uh, the voice of I don't know, like I me mean, as a kid, I'm going crazy because as a kid, I, I love the uh, Batman, the animated series. So they're bringing back the voice that did all the Batman uh, from the Batman, the animated series. Uh, the Batman that was in uh, in in um, Batman Beyond and the Batman that was also in Justice League and Justice League Unlimited. They're bringing him back and he's actually going to have the part as Bruce, an older Bruce Wayne, uh, you know, and so I'm excited to see um, to see uh, Kevin Conroy come in and do the part of an older Bruce Wayne and have the voice of Batman from the animated series come out. That that's actually going to be pretty cool to see. Another throwback that will also be in in um, in uh, Crisis on Infinite Earth is going to be Burt Ward. Now, if you don't know who Burt Ward is, you've been stuck under a rock since you were a kid. I'm going to tell you that right now because Burt Ward is the original Robin from the 1960s TV show Batman. So he was the one that pretty much coined the fans, holy rusted metal Batman or holy this Batman or holy that Batman. You know, he, that character, he's actually going to be playing a small cameo. He's not going to be playing Robin, mind you. But there are pictures, there are there are uh, fo- there is footage actually online of him wearing the original red and yellow and green that that Robin wore, that the Robin costume wore back in the 1960s uh, TV show. And he's he's seen walking a dog. So. It's possible he might make a small cameo, but it's going to be really cool to see him uh, make an appearance on that one. Of course, we have uh, LaMonica Garrett, who's going to be playing uh, the monitor and the anti-monitor, you know, and, uh, you know, another really cool character. rumor this hasn't uh this may or may not have already been made official but uh they're they're talking about having a cameo the titans dc's titans which is an amazing show by the way they're having they're they're thinking about having them do a cameo on the crossover as well and along with uh cast members from the old series birds of prey which if you don't remember what that series is that that series is basically about the daughter of both Bruce Wayne and Selena Kyle, a.k.a. Batman and Cat- Catwoman. Uh, they had a daughter together by the name of Huntress. And uh, she they had a series on her for, I think it only lasted like about a season or something like that before it was canceled. And uh, they're thinking about bringing her, bringing cast members from that world into uh, the crisis as well. I, I got to tell you right now, the, so far, the episodes that I've watched from The Flash and the series premiere of the final season of Arrow, uh, they have been, they have really gotten me hooked. Like, they have been talking about the crisis coming. 
Uh, there have been different scenes of what happens with the crisis. I mean, this last episode of The Flash, spoiler alert, by the way, uh, shows uh, Grass, Grant Gustin, uh, the Flash Barry, uh, basically go uh, to the different world where the other Flash is, and they put him under uh, an experiment where they have him see uh, different possibilities, kind of like what happened with uh, Doctor Strange in Endgame, where he sees different possibilities, different futures of the destruction of Earth. Uh, in this case, it's the destruction of various Earths. And uh, the Flash, Barry, Barry has seen different instances where different people die, different Earths are destroyed, so much suffering, and it just takes a toll on Barry. Uh, in, in the premiere of Arrow, again, spoiler alert if you haven't seen it just yet, uh, basically, uh, Stephen Mel's character, uh, Oliver Queen has gone to a different earth where he had, where his version of Oliver Queen has been stuck on Lian Yu for 12 years as opposed to five years. And it's, it's a world where Thea has died from an overdose. Uh, uh his brother is Malcolm Merlin's son, uh, and, it turns out the Malcolm Merlin son is also is is the Black Arrow, but in this instance, you know, uh, it, a lot of things happen. But at the end of the of the episode, you see that that Earth is being destroyed by antimatter. It's being completely dissolved. Like it's almost like again, it's almost like the snap of the finger of of uh, of Thanos in in uh, in Endgame, where everybody just dissolves and vanishes. Same same. They're they're pretty much doing the same thing that that happened. So it's gonna be interesting, man. I am excited to see this crossover because it's gonna be gigantic. gigantic. And oh my god, I cannot stress this enough how good this looks. Mind you. It looks good. And so far, it's starting to seem like it's pretty cool because I've seen the episodes. I've gotten hooked on the episodes. So, it, But it looks good so far. We'll see what the end result's going to have. You know, sometimes when, when shows decide, or movies for that matter, when they decide to overload on a bunch of characters, it loses, it loses, something, it, it loses something in the middle of it. And it's, you know, it sucks because, you know, at the end of the day, you want to see a great product, but sometimes it doesn't deliver and sometimes it's just too much it's an overload so we'll see is it's yet to see so far the the build up to crisis has been really cool so we'll see what happens when crisis on infinite earth airs in december in sports the nfl is heating up and man is it heating up so many teams have had great games it's been all over the place fantasy football players are pulling their hair Trust me, I know that because I'm one of them. But so far, the standings are pretty up in the air as well. In the AFC East, the Patriots hold a 6-0 record. In the AFC North, the Ravens hold a 4-2 record. In the AFC South, the Texans hold a 4-2 record as well. And in the AFC West, the Chiefs hold a 5-2 record. In the NFC... The NFC East, the Cowboys hold a 3-3 three and three record. The NFC North, the Packers hold a 5-1 and one record. In the NFC South, the Saints hold a 5-1 and one record. And the NFC East, I'm sorry, in the NFC West, the 49ers hold a 5-0 oh record. Now, 49ers have been putting in a lot of work these past few weeks. So, it's it'll be interesting to see exactly... Uh, where they go, they have they meet up against uh, against Washington this week. So we'll see if Washington, eh, kind of a tough one right there, but we'll see if Washington is able to dethrone their undefeated streak. Uh, as far as the Patriots are concerned, they go up against. Um, they have a six and zero record right now. They are also currently undefeated. So they're the top two teams. Patriots face the New York Jets, which the New York Jets' defense has been pretty tough. We'll see if they'll be able to stop Tom Brady's uh, throwing power and we'll see what happens this weekend it's all up in the air we'll see who gets dethroned and or we'll see if they'll continue on with their winning streak in other sports news aew is killing at wwe's nxt in ratings for three weeks in a row man aew has brought kind of a sense of the wcw version back again um 
I, but they've also included a lot of amazing talent. I mean, I've been watching and some of the moves that these guys, that these wrestlers do, I have never seen on WWE. They make some pretty risky moves, acrobatic, incredibly athletic moves that I have not seen on WWE. Like they have not shown that the kind of charisma that these guys have. I guess it's because. In a sense, WWE is already an established product. AEW is a growing product, and these guys have something to prove. And man, are they proving it. They're hungry, and they want to show that they are the brand to watch at on Wednesday nights. NXT is a build-up brand for the WWE. And as many members of AEW have commented, they have said that, that they are not here to compete against WWE. They are here simply to just be. That's all they are. They're they're here to go ahead and just put on a great product. And in the end, if they they go ahead and do something, if they go ahead and have some sort of uh some sort of an impact, so be it. If they don't, they don't. But so far they have had a great impact on the viewers because they remain high on Wednesday nights as far as rankings go. Uh, this past this past Wednesday night, we had the match between Chris Jericho versus Darby Allen for the AEW title. Spoiler alert, in case you haven't seen it, man, that match was insane. They went ahead, it was a it was a street fight kind of match. And people were, I think, I believe that the crowd was expecting more of a street fight, less of a, less of an in-ring fight, but they actually brought it in the ring too, because Chris Jericho decided to go ahead and tie uh, Darby Allen's hands behind his back and he, and, and he fought, he fought with both his hands tied behind his back. He even did his move, uh, the, the, Darby Allen's finishing move is a diving backwards I guess uh, splash, you might say. Uh, I be I guess he calls it the corpse or the casket, something like that, where he actually like puts his hands around his chest and he just dives backwards on top of the person, uh, like if he's in a in a casket or something. It was pretty crazy. He did this with his hands tied behind his back. I've never seen that. I mean, he did so many crazy moves with his hands tied behind his back. I was shocked. I mean, it may not have been your typical street fight. I mean, yes, there were weapons. It was more like a hardcore fight. But the stuff that this kid did was just shocking. I was in, like, awe. That's not to mention, of course, the tag teams that were also featured on uh, this episode of Dynamite. That's the show's call. That's what AEW's wrestling show is called, is AEW Dynamite Wednesdays. And, man, I was just, like, I was just in shock and very impressed at uh, at the show and uh, what it brought. Obviously, the ratings speak for themselves. So we'll see what happens next week uh, with the ratings and with uh, with AEW. In video game news, we have Madden. The Madden Twenty most feared set has has uh, has decided to make its appearance, and uh, so far the the currency. For the for uh, for Madden stands at bats. It's basically it's basically all it is. It's bats, and um, the you know the way the way you accumulate bats is basically you know you just go th do you do your solos, and um, when you do your solos when you do your solos there's different solo battles. You get bats, and you also get you also get um, you also get. Uh, 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 captain tokens, actually, they're called captain tokens, and um, what ends up happening is that with these captain tokens, you with these captain tokens, you go ahead and boost up your Ryan Shazier or whatever captain you have for your uh, for your current team, which in essence will go ahead and boost up your team. Obviously, you boost up your captain, you boost up your team, so that'll be something very handy to have as well. And uh, you also, the bat currency, you collect about, I think, 91,000 or 92,000 bats, and you're eligible to purchase a 92 overall player, which will also boost up your team by a lot. So that's something to uh, to take part in, the solos and, you know, head-to-head. -head. Also, house rules, uh, I, uh, there was... Uh, it has been said that house rules also have bat currency as well. So, and house rules is coming next week. Uh, there are rumors going around 
saying that house rules is all weak and you have to win like 72 or 75 uh, games head to head. So that'll be pretty interesting to, to check out come next week for house rules. In other uh, video game news, Call of Duty Modern Warfare comes out next week. And man, is it jam-packed with really cool stuff. The beta version came out, and many gamers are saying that the beta version was really awesome. The That uh, it's very similar to Battlefield in the sense that um, there's more interaction with vehicles. You could actually like drive a vehicle. I believe uh, you could drive a tank and a plane, things like that, uh, helicopter, things like that. And uh, there's more um, there's more activity going on. Plus, another really cool thing that Activision announced: there is no more season pass. Well, at least not for this modern this for this Call of Duty coming out. So there will be no season pass. Uh, and all maps, both present and future maps that are coming out, are all free yes you heard right they are free no more season pass no more having to buy a season pass for a hundred and something odd dollars in order to play the brand new maps with your friends none of that so that's really cool that activision decided to go ahead and do do that um maybe they saw dips in price maybe it dips in 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 finances when nobody purchased the the season pass because they were extremely expensive so maybe they saw that and they decided you know what let's just skip that and give them you know something free which is really cool um and also instead of loot boxes uh they will be swapping loot boxes for battle packs so that's something else that uh that Activision announced as well for the new Call of Duty coming out next week. In other video game news, Xbox Scarlet will be backwards compatible. Yes, Microsoft announced that Xbox Scarlet will have that feature, something that Xbox One did not have when they first came out with it. And I'm sure they got a lot of complaints from a lot of gamers saying that, hey, you know what, I just bought all these games on my Xbox 360, Xbox One came out, now I have to rebuy all games again? Come on. I was one of those players that was actually very upset about that because, to be honest with you, I had to rebuy all my games. And then months later, Microsoft made it backwards compatible. I just lost a bunch of games and I had to, you know, buy them back again. It was really irritating, very annoying. So I'm glad that Microsoft decided to make this one backwards compatible. But it will not only be backwards compatible for the Xbox One, it will also be backwards compatible for all generations. Yes, for all generations. Don't know how many games are going to make backwards compatible, but it's really cool that they're making uh, it backwards compatible for the Xbox original, Xbox uh, original uh, one and uh, Xbox 360 and the Xbox one. So that's going to be pretty cool to have finally something that's going to be backwards compatible. And I'm really excited about well, that's all for the Xander Effect. Thank you so much for watching it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so that way you could get that notification every time I post a brand new video of news that you may not have heard yet. So, you know, that way you could keep keeping, you know, keeping uh, uh, keep apprised to everything that goes on in entertainment, sports, and video games. Thanks so much for watching. I leave you now with J Prism's "All Your Love" featuring Amanda Holly and Echizona. We'll see you next time. Yeah, no, it's time to make a move. But you track now, sun's at the mood. Better work if it wanna see the view, yeah. Wanna be traps, baby, it's a cue. Yeah, no, I live for the bass drum. Seeing time waves cross the dance floor. Tonight, we gonna live it up. Gotta turn it up. Give it all you got now. So, let's at the party. If the vibes are going, we can be more. Let the music take you over.
Feeling you feeling the way I'm feeling too. I'm only telling the real about me. Ay, let them lie if they want, baby, but I'm the truth. I made a buzz off of spitting it on the fly. But I ain't worried about these groupies who swarm the hive. Give me your heart and I'm giving you all of mine. I came across a vibe, it's pretty hard to find it. Xander Dames here, and if you like this video or any of my other videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button so that way you guys could get a little bell every time I upload another video. And also make sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram.